you very much, Sharks. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to day two of the Intel Extreme Masters World Championship. My name is Sherbra. I'll be your host once again here in day two. And we have some amazing matches lined up already. And from the get-go, we are going to be on fire with the emotions. Every team from now on will decide their fate in their next games. First up, we will have that rematch in game in Group A, rather, will it be a deja vu? We had one team dominating in the first time they met, but they both looked pretty good backstage, so let's get them on the stage and see how they'll look on Summoner's Rift. From Europe, we will have SK Gaming! What are we waiting for? We're all here for the game itself, so let's go back to the expert desk to prepare the picks and bands. Thank you so much, Chobra. Glad to see uh, the teams are, well, there. I mean, I don't know where that was going, but obviously they're here <laughs> because they're going to be playing. Anyway, um, something else that we heard from the Yoi Flash Wolves was that they have seen from uh, the GE Tigers how to beat SK Gaming and the GE Tigers through the strategy of defending their towers, remember, and being good in lanes. Remember, in the lane swap, we have the Maokai coming in lane with the double Dorans and the blue buff. The question is, of course, if the OE Flash Wolves are strong enough to replicate that. Uh, no, I can already say no to that because you cannot replicate that if you don't have the depth of strategy and champion pool that the GE Tigers have. Your mid lane is not going to be able to play Victor. We haven't seen Maple play it. I could assume that he has a mechanical prowess for it, but it's not something that the team would be used to. Same goes you know, in primarily the top lanes. Meb to stake champion pool is miles apart. And that would, to me, be the telltale as to why you cannot fully replicate this strategy. And if you ban out the double AD carry, well, SK could just first pick a Caitlyn, and then now what's uh, NL left with? Yeah, that's, that's the big question, too. I mean, for, for the, I feel like the matchup between Forgiven and NL is just, the difference is really, really big in terms of skill between these two carries. And I, I think that, yes, GE has given clues as to how to beat SK, but it was, it was more than the champion pool. It was the way they lane swapped, the way they played the early jungle, the handoff of the blue buff that kept their towers up, and they weathered the storm. And that's what you have to do against SK, is make sure early they don't get those towers, they don't get too much of an advantage, and then you can just beat them with, late, with team fighting in the late game. With team fighting in the late game, even with Forgiven being better in positioning than NL? Well, I would, I would argue that SK doesn't have much of initiation if you miss every Tibbers, so there's that, you know, <laughs> there's that aspect to it as well. They have to come up with something and have more consistent crowd control. I think the thing that I want to see from the Flash Wolves in terms of using what the GE showed how to beat SK is not so much in the picks, but more so in the early itemization of laning items. We saw both mid lane and top lane going with double D rings to weather the early game, make sure that they sustain themselves through the laning phase, and then eventually transition to a more mid game power spike. I don't think the Yoi Flashful should get a hand on the Janna. They should definitely ban I that. totally agree. <laughs> or first pick it for SK, but we have not seen any rated pick it so far. Yeah, but it would fit in that if they want to go tower defense, Janna Absolutely. seems like the easy uh, champion to pull it off with. You talk about itemization as well, but we have seen some very interesting itemization from the side of the Joey Flash Wolf, and I don't know if their preparation or the way they go into a game is as such that they itemize against something right at the beginning of a game. That is true, but... Um, I don't know exactly how they're going to be able to pull it off just because the early itemization of double Dorans in certain lanes simplify me means that you're going to be wanting to go for more of a laning bully. And for instance, Stake, I don't think is a guy to be the lane bully. And Maple can do so, but against a Diana pick, Diana's not really attempting to bully out too hard. She, you can max the shield, stay in the lane for quite a bit, and you're not going to be able to punish her. 
What's the probability of this Diana coming in once again here? Because I, I have to say, I really, it did work out 50-50, I guess, yesterday, but it, it's really weird that it just came on, it, it did have a couple of changes, but for especially Fox, I don't understand the pick. Yeah, I, I would have to say it's a little bit odd, but remember in the last game, Yoey was the one who banned out Zed and LeBlanc, which have been some of Fox's go-to champions. Yeah. So if they're available, will he go back to a more standard pick? Personally, I hope so. Um, but then again, SK did ban that Zed yesterday on the red side against GE, and they didn't even play Zed. Like, mm -hmm. they, they're just not a team that plays Zed. So I'm wondering if they're just trying to keep that out of the champion pool, if they think that if these other assassins are gone, that they can have some sort of... Uh, advantage in terms of either split pushing or backline kill potential with Diana. Mm -hmm. Personally, I think that if they let the Diana go through, uh, Mabel will most certainly not go with the assassin route, and they'll try a Zerath Rengar again. The combination looked very effective in terms of neutralizing the Diana in the laning phase, but the assassin matchup, it's not going to be a world lead style Diana where she goes teleport, has no kill pressure. Fox played very aggressively at one point, almost killing Kuro in lane, yep. and we're going to see that again if the Diana goes through, but against a long-range Zerat that doesn't want to partake in any of that harass, any of that fighting. He just wants to farm. With the Rengar, I like to deal with the Diana in that way. Otherwise, if they want to go with more an assassin route, I do think the Diana would be a good ban. Yeah, and Karsa, too, did have that great game, early game on Rengar, picking up multiple kills. He's known in Taiwan for the, for the strength of his Rengar play. So uh, that may be a necessary ban as well if you don't want to start losing lanes. Even in a lane swap situation, the kill potential of that Rengar is pretty, pretty damn high in the early game. Yeah, he was pretty good on Rengar, but then the J4 hasn't been that convincing from anyone, basically. Well, you know, the J4, we've, seen, we've talked about him not being convincing, and that's primarily because of his early game being so weak. He's a lot squishier, but the late game, he still becomes that CC monster. And if you're not used to playing around a Cataclysm, we saw in multiple fights against Cloud9, where he'd get a Cataclysm off and then die, and that's really all you need to do. Drop one combo, use a Cataclysm, and then you die and absorb a lot of the damage for your team. And uh, I think the poor team fighting from Cloud9 allowed the Jarvan to really out shine. Yeah, I do think uh, if it comes to the late game, SK is a team that's always been very good at playing the late game, and I even think that if the Joey Flash Wolves get there and are able to hold off, it might not be enough. With a, with a right draft like they did in the first time they faced each other, I think they'd be able to, to get to the gate late game and uh, almost pull a, a Cloud9-esque type uh, victory as they did yesterday. Okay. What about a Cloud9-esque victory in terms of sending someone to split push and taking an inhibitor and almost winning the game? <laughs> Well, you know, I don't know who the, who the player from the Flash Wolves would be the one to do that. Perhaps Maple on Zed, but uh, other than that, unless we see Stake on Aurelia, you know, he, it's one of his most plays in the NLS. I want to see it. I, I want to <laughs> see it, too. I mean, you want to see Aurelia you, all day? Of I course, say, yes. It's such a strong pick because it's kind of a pseudo tank. It's a pseudo. It, it requires a lot of pressure, though, and it needs a team to trust in that player. And maybe they don't trust Stake, but um, that's really it. Like, is the Yoey Flashville jungler willing to go top and really help out Stake. So far, I don't think so. And on the other hand, we have, of course, Sven Skarin. Uh, we see him on screen right there as well. And remember, you can also check out some stats with the, the Score Esports app as well if you want some more insight into all of these matchups. But Sven Skarin has been very convincing in the EULCS and all their wins. And if he gets his hands on something like a Nidalee or a Rengar, that's very good for them. Well, you know, what really stood out in their match yesterday was when we looked at the early game, when they did, when SK did initiate that lane swap, quickly clearing out that tower up in the top side, Svensko spends a lot of time in lane. He was in the bottom lane, helping to clear the wave, making sure that that tower didn't get chipped so that they would consistently have the turret advantage and be able to snowball off that map pressure. You have to get your jungler into lane in that situation. We talked about how GE, they didn't ward as much in the early game that was pointed out, uh, and that was because when you're just in lane and your jungler's in lane, there's not so much of a need to be warding because you always have multiple people as long as your mid's playing a little bit further back and just doing his, his job. You got basically dual lanes in both top and bottom and it becomes very difficult to gank and it's just about holding out. Yeah. I think that the Flash Wolves should not allow Sven to play the Rek'Sai. Rek'Sai has shown multiple times yeah. throughout this tournament an incredibly powerful champion. And the most important thing about this champion is that if you play it in a 3-1-1 is a 3-1-1 style, Rek'Sai is going to be able to teleport all over the map and just help every single lane out. And it's going to be a lot harder to engage on her than on the Nidalee.